Okay, um, this is the first of three short examples, uh, specifically in preparation for the EGH 303 exam. Um, this first example, um, again, in terms of you know what, what, how this might slot into an exam question, this would be a part of a bigger exam question. Um, and the question or the example is based on Rayleigh's method of indices, which was one of the tools we used when we were looking at dimensional analysis. Um, the significance of that in our understanding of aerodynamic theory. It's a very powerful technique that helps us to get a feel for how different the different relationships between variables that describe aerodynamics flows. Um, and this was the first time, I think, in the course that we came across uh, this important parameter, the Reynolds number, this non-dimensional parameter that describes something important about the flow field. So this question says, if we can assume that the drag force acting on a body, uh, and that force, uh, a body, is a function uh, only of the free stream density, so that f should represent the function there, uh, the a function of the free stream density, free stream velocity, body length, and free stream dynamic viscosity, so that's rho infinity, ddd, let's make sure I'm writing, Rho infinity, V infinity, L, and mu infinity, the dynamic viscosity, where L is um, the body length scale, show that the drag coefficient is simply a function of Reynolds number. And we can do this just using dimensional analysis by Rayleigh's method. So the problem states that D is a function of rho infinity, V infinity, L, and mu infinity. And in the method of indices, we assume that that implies that we can write this, or we assume that we can write this relationship in this form, that there's some dimensionless constant of proportionality that relates drag to these independent variables um, and that the relationship of these variables to drag is described by indices that we set so we'll go A for rho infinity, B for V infinity, C for L and D for mu infinity. Of course A, B, C and D are to be determined, they could be negative implying that these are inverse relationships or positive implying that they are direct uh, relationships. And what we always need in these relationships is dimensional consistency. So we require dimensional consistency. I have no idea why my pen is doing some strange things here. I apologize. We require dimensional consistency which basically implies that and the, the notation that we used for talking about the dimensions of parameters was to write these square brackets around things. So we require that the dimensions of D drag must be equal to, remember K is dimensionless, so we can effectively ignore it at this stage. The dimensions of the product of these terms here. Let's just have a little think in fundamental dimensions. And remember we talked about for the problems that we're interested in in aerodynamics are fundamental dimensions. Which are different to units. Units are things like meters, seconds. Fundamental dimensions are mass, length, and time. And in some cases we might also need temperature. That's another dimension, but we don't need that in this problem. So let's have a think about the fund fundamental dimensions of, first of all, drag. Well, if you if you don't remember these, the easy thing is to think of a an equation, a relationship that you know um, would describe this. Drag is a force. We know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So the dimensions of drag being a force must be mass times the dimensions of acceleration, which is L t to the minus 2, 
or over t uh, squared. Units of rho infinity, again we just need to think about dimensions, sorry, of rho infinity. Um, well, the, the definition of rho is that it's mass per unit volume, so it must have dimensions mass over uh, L cubed. Uh, similarly, dimensions of V, which is a velocity, that will be distance over time or length over time. And L is very straightforward, of course, a length, the dimensions of a length. just L. And possibly the most tricky one here would be mu. Now, I know that the standard units, the SI units of dynamic viscosity are Pascal seconds, so I could use the dimensions of pressure multiplied by time. If you don't remember that, you can think about a relationship that's got mu in it, and of course Reynolds number itself, you can remember the definition of Reynolds number, that's got mu in it, so you could rearrange that to work out what the fundamental dimensions are, but I know that this is has units Pascal seconds. Now Pascal is pressure, which is a force over area. So uh, we know already that a force is ML over T squared. Now over area would put an L squared on the bottom, and it's Pascal seconds, there would be a T on the top. And if we cancel things out from this, that square goes, that squares, and this comes out as m over t l. So those are the fundamental dimensions of each of the variables that appear in this relationship. Um, So now we can uh, we can compare the powers in our relationship here. Let's call this let's call this relationship star. And um, we'll start off by comparing the powers of the dimension L. So if we look at where L's appear on the left-hand side and make sure that all the powers um, equate on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. So on the right-hand side, we've got D, which is ML over T to the 2. So there's just a, effectively the power 1, L to the power 1 here on the left-hand side of the, the equation. So 1 is equal to now. Rho infinity has... Is, is raised to the power a, and it has dimensions m over l to the 3, so the powers of l on the right-hand side will be minus 3a. v infinity has got an l to the power b, so this is going to be a b here. For l, which is dimension big L raised to the power c, that's just going to be a c. And then mu infinity has got a 1 over L to the power D, so this is going to be minus D on this side, and we call that equation 1. If we compare powers of, what should we do next? Let's do M. And then just switch over onto the next slide to do this. We find, just Go back here on the left hand side we've got an M in on the left hand side in this drag term, which is just to the, effectively to the power one. It's, this is M to the power one. We've got an M in the row infinity term raised to the power A, so it's gonna be an A. There's no M in V infinity, there's no M in the L term, and there's an M to the power D in the mu infinity term. In fact, we could write this one. This is so simple, we could just write it down here. So we get 1 is equal to A plus D. Let's call that equation 2. And, uh, I'll squeeze the last one to the bottom so we can see them all on the same slide. So if we do um, compare.
comparing powers of t using exactly the same method we get a minus 2 on the left hand side because of the 1 over t squared is equal to um, there's no t in the row infinity there's a 1 over t in the v infinity which is raised to the power b so we get a minus b nothing in the l and then a minus d here so we've got three equations so let's just pause for a minute there and see where we're at so we've got equation one here we've got equation two here and equation three here so we've got three equations four unknowns which you might think well that's a bit of a problem because to solve four to solve explicitly for four unknowns we would need four equations but actually all we're interested in in dimensional analysis is consistency we need the relative the relative values of the powers to be such that when you put the equation back together there is dimensional consistency and what that allows us to do is to arbitrarily select one of these powers and and fix its value and then what we're interested in is what are the values of the each of the other indices relative to that one that we fixed and you could choose there's no right or wrong way to do this you could choose either a b c or d and fix it um, and then work out the others from that and piece the equation back together what i will do in this case um, just because I can see from the way the, those three equations are constructed that this would be a neat way of doing it, is I'm going to choose, but this would work out however you did this, I'm going to choose that d is equal to some number n that we don't know. Okay. So d, now from that we can substitute into equation 2 and equation 3 to get b and a. And if we do that, we will get a is equal to 1 minus n. We will get b is equal to 2 minus n. And then we can substitute for a and b back into 1. And d, of course, is n to find out what c is. And if we do that, we get 1 plus n. 3, 1 minus n, minus 2 minus n, plus n, which equals 2 minus n. So now we've got, relative to our fixed, we set the value of d as being some arbitrary number n, and if d is equal to n, then a must be 1 minus n, b must be 2 minus n, c must be 2 minus n. So let's substitute these relationships. To that original assumption that we made that d could be written in this form as some dimensionless constant of proportionality rho infinity to the a v infinity to the b l to the c mu infinity to the d and what do we get we get d is equal to k rho infinity to the 1 minus n v infinity to the 2 minus n l minus n mu infinity to the n and if we rearrange this we get d is equal to rho infinity v infinity squared l squared rho infinity v infinity L, this is to the minus n, to the minus n, to the minus n, mu to the n. Oops. D is equal to k rho infinity, the infinity squared, L squared, mu infinity over rho infinity, v infinity to the L n. And hopefully at this point, and of course in the back of your mind when you're doing this question, you're thinking to yourself, well we've got to try and find a term that looks like Reynolds number, and we found it. Because this term here is 1 over Reynolds number, because 
Reynolds number, the definition of Reynolds number is rho v times some length scale divided by mu. We're not quite there, because of course what we were asked to show in the question was that it's the drag coefficient uh, that is a function of Reynolds number alone. Um, but we're close to being able to do that because if we divide through by this term here, we get something that looks very much like a drag coefficient. In fact, all that's missing is a half term here to turn that into a drag coefficient because the drag coefficient is drag over dynamic viscosity, which is a half rho v squared times an area, which is given here by L squared. So this is 1 over Re to the n. Now, since CD is directly proportional to this term D over rho infinity, V infinity squared, L squared is the only thing that's missing. The constant of proportionality, if you like, is this half that's missing at the bottom. And this is equal to a dimensionless constant of proportionality times 1 over Reynolds number to the power n. The implication of this is that CD is simply a function of Reynolds number, which is an important result that we've derived fairly quickly in this example using just dimensional analysis. Notice that at no point in this question did we need to understand anything really about the phenomenon of aerodynamics and the aerodynamics principles. We simply applied dimensional analysis to get to this really quite powerful result.